I'm, um, I'm not Simon Cowell. Yeah. <laughs> We've been watching America's Got yep. Talent, so that's right. Like, the word that came from. But anyway. Anybody watch that? Yes. yes. That ventriloquist girl is phenomenal. Yes, she, she is. Wow. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. The first time she came on stage and had that, and the puppet starts singing, and it's like, wow. Anyway. Okay, New Beginnings, Jeremiah, chapter 29. It's been a long time since I preached from the Old Testament. We don't want to forget that Old Testament. We live in the New Testament. Let's not forget the Old Testament. Though. Jeremiah 29, verses 11 to 13 says, For I know the plans I have for you. Who do you think is speaking there? God through Jeremiah, right? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Let us pray. Lord, we're thankful for the scripture today. We pray that it, it changes us. It does not fall on death force. It does not fall on heart. But Lord, your word is designed to be transforming. And we ask right now that it does transform us. Use me as your messenger today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Anybody have plans? Mm -hmm. Anybody have plans for the future? No? Nobody has plans? Or do you live day to day? <clears throat> I have plans. I want to retire one day. That's my plan. <laughs> However, I don't really find it in Scripture where it talks about retirement too much. But yeah, but that's my plan one day, is maybe to retire. Here's a question. Do your plans include God? Uh-oh. Or are they just your own personal interests or what you want to do? No. When, this, when Jeremiah has given this prophecy to the people, the Jews were in exile in Babylon. In fact, the Lord said they're going to be in exile for 70 years in Babylon. There was false prophets that were being raised up to try and encourage the Jews to rebel against the king Nebuchadnezzar at the time. But the Lord is not telling them to do that. They're very discouraged. There wasn't hope. 70 years is a long time. God has a plan. If we would just wait on his plan. Right? He plans to return them all back to Israel. He plans to restore them as they were before. And he plans to dwell with them. He plans to be there with them through this process. And sometimes we have to remember this when we're going through those difficult trials. That God is there with us. We were never intended to go through them alone. God will help us. God will walk with us. God will encourage you if you allow him to. But we made the, I'm sorry, I would say I made the mistake of focusing on the trial and not focusing on God. And, and too many times we fall into that trap. As we're going through difficult times, we focus on the situation mm -hmm. instead of focusing on God because God is where our hope is and God has a plan and when I just say God will never what? leave you or forsake you right so do you believe God has a plan for us okay now notice I didn't say you right now he has a plan for you he also has a plan for us what's us? the church, the body of Christ yes God has plans for Northside Christian Church. He wouldn't sustain this church as long as he had if he didn't have a plan for it. The baptisms today. We like to think that God had a plan that today would be the day that they were going to be baptized. That this would be a church that would welcome people into it. 
that will love the people that walk in the doors and to demonstrate that love of Christ for one another. And as Waisha and David were sharing with me yesterday, they felt like this was the place. I mean, they've been in and out of other churches, but they felt convicted now. This is the time. I'm ready, they said, to dedicate my life to Christ. I'm ready to turn over, you say, another leaf or whatever you want to say. But to put my focus on Christ. Prosperity. That's not necessarily a bad word as a Christian. God doesn't necessarily want us to be struggling all the time. He wants you to prosper. He wants the church to prosper. He gives us a hope. He gives us a future. As a church and as individuals, right? Because this is God's body. This is God's body, right? What's Romans 12 say, verse 4, 6, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ. We, though many from one body, each member belongs to what? Everyone else. We're all interconnected. We, when we were on uh, vacation last week, our daughter took us to a Cardinals baseball game. Sorry, Rose. Anyway, Cardinals and Cubs are big rivals. And they, they, again. Yeah, they were doing this thing. They did this thing. I don't know how to do it like this or something. Meaning that they're together. This is the, that's something I don't know the Cardinals baseball players do. I'm like, we're all in this together. And that's all of us. We're all in this together. <clears throat> we're all in this together, right? So in Christ, though many form one body, each member belongs to the others. We have what? Different gifts. How often do we do we look at somebody else and say, I don't understand why they don't think the way I do. I don't understand why they don't see this problem or the situation the same way I do. God, praise God, he created us different. And that should be something we should embrace. Yes. And not see it as a problem. But it's hard sometimes to see from other people's points of view because we're so prejudiced with our own point of view. Sometimes we just gotta open our hearts to listen to other people and their points of view as well. You know, evangelism, we have we have to listen. We can't just do all the talking. Listen to, them. you know, where is the person at? What are they struggling with? What do they need prayer for? Instead, so many times we want to do all the talk. And now, are they listening? Probably not. But you know, when you listen to the other person first, you show respect for them. And they're more likely to listen to you if you listen to them. And you know what? I've said this before. If you listen, they will give you an opening to witness. Maybe they have money troubles. Maybe they don't have any hope. Maybe they're in a dead-end job, whatever it may be. They will give you an opportunity to share your own story. Your own story, right? So we have different gifts. We're not all gifted the same way. According to the grace, grace. We have gifts because of the grace of God. Now, I preached this, it's only been three years since I've preached about spiritual gifts, and I'm going to preach about it again, because many of us don't know what our spiritual gifts are, and we'll have assessments so you can determine what your spiritual gifts are. Does that mean that you are perfect in that area? No. You know what it really means? It means that you enjoy it. Yes. That it's a point of satisfaction. That it doesn't feel like work. Okay. It's something that energizes you, that you enjoy doing. That's all that, that's what spiritual gifts, and we can develop them. Peter Wagner said, the spiritual gift is a special attribute <coughs> given by the Holy Spirit to who? Every. Every member of the body of Christ according to what? God's grace. Not us. That's not, it's according to God's grace for use within what? The church. He gives us spiritual gifts to use in this body, 
to serve in this body by His grace. God, through the Holy Spirit, equips us through His grace to what? Serve Him. Him. Through the church. According His grace. So it's not something for us just to go and do on our own. He gives us the gifts to serve right in here in this church. Here's the scriptures. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to talk about all the gifts, but these are the scriptures where you can find them. Yes. And we will do, I'll do another sermon in which we delve into the spiritual gifts themselves. Because, you know, and just some of them, hospitality, generosity, prophecy, teaching, preaching, helps. Um, this is just some of the many gifts. Administration. That's it. It's that simple. That's why we're here. It's to glorify God. Not to glorify ourselves. Glorify God. Serve Him. Glorify God. That's why we're here. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus said to His disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's probably one of the most difficult scriptures. That means we literally have to die to ourselves. Die to ourselves. <laughs> to serve Him. Right? Take up our cross and follow Him. Peter said he would do it, right? Uh -huh. He'd follow Jesus. Where are you going? I'll follow you. And what what Jesus said to him, Peter? Crows are going to crow how many times? Right? The time he crows three times, you deny them. Word that I always say people in the military don't like to hear, and that's surrender. But when it comes to God, if you want to live, you have to die. When you live, you have to die to self. You have to surrender, right? We have to relinquish our heart, give up our heart. We have to yield our will. But I want to do it. You ever catch yourself saying that? I don't need to ask God. I know what to do. I made that mistake. Some things just seem so simple. Why even bother God? And then it blows up in your face. Give up our selfishness. Let's change our pride. That pride's a sneaky thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're real prideful in areas we're oftentimes totally unaware of. And sometimes we just have to seek God and ask Him to reveal them to us. Yes. God, where am I prideful? Can you reveal it to me? Because I don't want it. Yes. Right? I don't want it. Right? Or as the song says, your heart, your mind, your soul. He's after it all. He wants it all. He wants all of you. But we just want to give him a small portion, don't we, sometimes? God, I'll give you this, but I'm going to hang on to this. I'll give you this, but you can't go there. He wants all of us. And then we, and when we don't give it all, we wonder, where is he? Why doesn't he answer my prayers? Why doesn't he speak to me? Because we have a certain and if we're living in sin, it separates us from God. Right. That's why we were separated from God before Jesus came. Mm -hmm. For the fall. The sin. Why does Jesus on the cross say, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's because of the sin that he took to the cross separated him from God. Just as it does today. Unless we're willing to confess that sin... We are separated from God. That's why Jesus went to the cross, so he could break that barrier, break down that barrier, create a bridge of reconciliation to God the Father. Relationship. That's what God wants. He wants relationship. 
That's why Jesus went to the cross. He restored our relationship. Through relationship, God works. Without relationship, you're probably not going to see Him working much in your life if you don't have a relationship with Him. Because this is what He wants to do. He wants to prosper. He wants to give you hope. He wants to give you a future, strength, unity. And prayer is where a relationship yeah. takes place. Prayer is critical to that relationship. Prayer and the Word of God. The Word of God helps us to understand the character of God. Prayer brings us into a relationship with God. And you know, sometimes if you're having a hard time praying, read some scripture. It'll often open up your heart and your mind and bring you in communion with God by reading His Word as well. Well, you probably wouldn't be here if you didn't think this was true, but many people don't think it's true. Church is important to God. God created the institution, the church. Why? Why can't I just stay home on Sunday morning? I don't want to get up and go to church. I can just watch TV evangelists. And as I said before, that's not church. You may receive a good teaching, but church is when we all gather together. Whether we do it in the parking lot, we do it at Starbucks, we do it at Granny T's house. It doesn't matter where we do it. It's the gathering of the people. That's church. That's church. It's where we come into fellowship with one another. It's where we come into accountability to one another. It's where we come in to be encouraged by one another. It's where we worship in adoration together. God. It's where we study His Word and learn about Him. It's where we seek Him. It's where we find Him. Now, Amen. you can seek Him at home and find Him too. I'm, I'm still wherever you go because now we have the Holy Spirit, right? But here we come together and seek Him together. And what's He say? We're two or three are gathered in my name. We're two or three are gathered in my name. Hopefully, when you leave, you feel encouraged because this is part of what church should be doing. You know, sometimes we've got to be picked up, you know, brushed off, and dusted off, and loved on, and cared for. I said this before, but this is all part. If we want to see God and His plans for your life, and how He wants to prosper you, and how He wants to work through you, we have to spend time with Him. We were talking this morning, why would Jesus choose the disciples he chose. They weren't educated. A tax collector who was corrupt, you know, fishermen, you know, he even used prostitutes. He used, what, ordinary people. People that had faults, people that had blemishes, people that were not studied in the Word. But he saw something in them. And just as, I think in the book of James, where it says he used ordinary people. And I was sharing this morning, when I had the first call came to me to go to the mission field, it wasn't a telephone. It was a call from God. And I was sitting in the pew. And the pastors of 1999, pastor got up and said, well, well, he's associate pastor, he got up and said, myself and this other person, we're going to Albania to work with the refugees from the Bosnian and something leaped inside of me. I want to go. I want to go. How do they do that? How's that happen? What's that? Happen? You know. And I'm like, where did that come from? Knock it off. And I was like, but just something leaped inside of me. And I knew God was calling me to do something for Him. Not everybody gets it that way. That's the way I got it that time. And so I spent the next years studying, preparing to go. Call on his name. Yeah. Call on the name of Jesus and what he will answer, right? Why will he answer? Because he is the answer. Yeah. God will answer your call because he is the answer. Woo! Gosh, wow. Isn't that encouraging? So he knows the plans he has for you. 
plans to what? Prosper you and not to harm you. God doesn't want to harm you. It doesn't mean that he won't take you through some testing. But he never intends to harm you. Plans to give you what? Hope and a future. Hope. Restoration. God. Do we have a future? Do you feel like you have a future? Yes! I hope so. I hope you have a future. <laughs> and I hope God's in it. You will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. That's a promise. You call on the name of Jesus and pray, he will listen. <coughs> Probably better than your best friend may listen to you. You will seek me and find me. Okay, here's, we can't cut it off there, right? You will seek me and you will find me when... You seek me with all your heart. Amen. Give it all. Yes. Take up your cross. Follow him. You've got to give it all. Give it all. He doesn't want lukewarm Christians. Amen. He wants Christians that are sold out. You will find God if you seek him with all your heart. This is what we want to do here. As a church. As God's church. As God's body. We want to be a congregation, a body of Christ that seeks Him with all our heart. As we start new life in this church, as new life is birthed in this church today. Amen. What about baptisms? New birth being taken place here this morning. Speaking of bap baptisms, if you want to, David, you want to go ahead and get ready. Daryl, you too. I'll give Baptism is faith. Baptism is faith in action. Baptism is faith in action. What's that mean? That means if you're being baptized, you're demonstrating your faith in Jesus. Baptism is faith in action. Baptism is the time we identify with the Godhead. What's the Godhead? The Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As they prepare and as they are baptized, they're going to identify with the death of Christ as they go into the watery grave, the burial of Christ, and then the resurrection is to be alive. Repentance is to proceed before obedience. Okay. That's true for each and every one of us. We need to be repentant. We need to have repentant hearts yes. before yes. Christ. And then be obedient. And it's a public testimony. I could have brought I could have brought them in yesterday. The water was ready, and just baptized them in. But that's not the way God wants it done, is it? God wants us to declare our faith in front of witnesses. Yeah. It's a public testimony and a public declaration. As we are baptized. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. What a great prayer that is, too. I have been crucified with Christ and no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Live in faith in the Son of God. Praise God for that. So as we looked at the scripture and we talked about this morning about new beginnings, we talked about new life. 
We talked about looking forward. Why? Because God has a plan. He has a plan for you. He has a plan for this church. What's that mean for us as the body? And I've been seeing his plan coming to fruition. I've seen his plan starting to work. And because I, I see people like David, and I see people like Waisha, who are turning their lives over to Christ. You can't tell me that's not part of God's plan. I think it very much is God's plan. Because God has made it clear that he doesn't want to see anyone not go to heaven. He wants everyone to be saved. That's his heart. It's for everyone to be saved. Well, I'm going to go back to her and we're going to start baptisms. I don't want to get a mic on you. <laughs> I don't want you to either. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> You're doing good, Debbie. It's all right. <coughs> this is since we've been here. I think it's the first time we've had multiple baptisms. I think we've only done one at a time. It's amazing how the word is working. <laughs> When I was in uh, when I was in Vietnam, I, he took me out. So this one guy said he was going to be baptized. And am I going to go? Can I go see it? I said, Sure, I love to go see it. So for our first time, this church plant was going to do it out in the ocean because we're on the east coast. Vietnam and Haiphong was a city, and so he um, so we went out there. And I saw all these people going out in the surf. I'm like, oh, wow, he's got a big support base. No, he baptized 20 people. Wow. 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 Just one after another. And I was like, wow. And I was there to see that. God's timing. Fantastic. Honey, if you let, um, if you come out of there, David can go in. But... He, he can't get to the other side of the steps. He could if Dave gets out. Uh, yeah, where is That's David? That's my home. He's right here. <coughs> okay, I'm going around. Okay, Dave, you can come yeah, in. We, we can make it work. David. For David, we'll make it work. Okay. Okay. That's all right. That's okay. Oh, man. What a good looking man. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. Yeah, it's cold, huh? <laughs> So David, how long have you been coming here now? About um, <laughs> a year? Mm -hmm. And who was it invited you? Uh, Snoopy. 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 Oh, hello. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. You're okay. He's, he's not getting hurt. <laughs> it's your baby. <laughs> so David's been coming here about a year. And I was, I was just sharing with you earlier, he and Waisha I was meeting with yesterday morning, and they, they were just so on fire for the Lord. And they just said, you know, we just really want to do this. And we're so excited, we can't wait for this to take place. And I'm not making this up. They were really saying that. They were almost giddy. <laughs> yeah. And David said, you know, I just got so sensitive lately. And I said, you know what? I think the Holy Spirit oh, is really working. Yes. Yes. I'm just so proud, glad to see it. So, David, do you, do you believe that Jesus is born of the Virgin Mary? Yes, I do. That he died on the cross, was buried, and was raised again. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you want to play your notes or anything about it, but in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you. Amen. Amen. Once, twice, three times you're baptized. Go to that side. Yeah, and Dave has to get out. Okay. And Daryl, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Jesus Christ. 
And I just, there's a movement. What, what was our second song we sang today? God is on the move. God is on the move. There was a reason for that because we're seeing it right now. We're seeing yes. it happen yes. right now in the church. God is on the move. Amen. Praise the Lord. Daryl, you believe Jesus is born in the Virgin Mary? Yes. Okay. That he died on the cross, was buried, and was raised again. Okay. You believe in the Trinity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you honor faith for your nose? You want to plug your nose? Okay. So we we'll baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. place you on the throne, where we all need to place you on the throne in our lives. Lord, you, you say you're the Savior, and Lord is the Savior, but Lord also means that you are the ruler. And so when we make you Lord in our lives, that means that we make you the ruler in our lives. And so Lord, help us in those areas that we don't want to allow you as to rule. Lord, as we leave here today, we ask that you just bless these people here today. Lord, that you encourage them, that you fill them with your love, you fill them with your spirit. Lord, that you walk before us, that we know your voice, we know your prompting, we know your leading, that we are obedient to what you're asking us and leading us to do. And we ask for blessings upon the food that we're about to partake. And we pray for a time of good fellowship and of rejoicing as we start again in Jesus' name.
Thank you all for coming. Please stay. We've got lots of food. And if anybody needs prayer for